Northern Illinois versus Notre Dame is almost here, Fighting Irish fans, and to preview this game by giving three keys and a score prediction, Tim Hyde's going to tell you what you need to know in this video. Please hit the thumbs up on this video before we dive into it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. Of course, head over to blueandgold.com. So much more coverage on your Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Okay, Tim, your three keys today are something else. Uh, you are uh, going... A little bit different. Key number one, Tim. Tim, I'm 31 years old. I haven't done math in a while. But this one's pretty simple. Six plus five plus five. Uh, but why is this a key to the game? Yeah, I did some uh, some analytics here, right? Some deep dive into the math right here. So Deep deep numbers, right? yeah. This is I mean, obviously, this is talking about the offensive line. When you, when you dive into it, they went into game one with six. We got five. Let's get another five. Keep adding five. Hopefully, you know, knock on wood, all goes good with these guys from the AM game. And they just keep compounding reps together, compounding communication, compounding snap after snap, practice, video, in the film room with Coach Rudolph. The words of wisdom from Coach Rudolph, who I thought did a heck of a job in game one managing those five guys against a front four that are all going to get drafted from Texas A&M. And on top of that, just also a quick little kudos, the more I dive, dove into the game, is is Mike Denbrock. You could say, you know, wasn't explosive and things of that nature. He literally called the ball game around that offensive line. And I thought it was an, a, a game plan to not just help the offensive line, but to win the game. He did what was necessary to win the game. And his quotes for all those that, you know, if you haven't heard, his press conference is outstanding. I, I thought he was very open and very honest about the, the plan for AM and uh, gave some great insight into that. And also, you know, as we talk about the offensive line, some people thought it, was, it wasn't bad, didn't have the greatest push and things of that nature. Obviously, a lot of run stuffs. They didn't give up sacks because I think, number one, that's the game plan itself. But also Riley Leonard, he has an NFL presence about him in that pocket where he's able to move around and he's got like that sixth sense of how to adjust um, within there. And he's one of the fewest sacked quarterbacks in his in all of his starts at Duke. So I thought that was good. And then just real quick, I, as we get off of this, is I went over the last few years because the Texas A&M defensive line, they're all going to get drafted. And I went back and looked at some a couple of the games against elite Defensive lines on the road, and I'm going to go over the front, uh, the starting five PFF. Georgia 19, the offensive line's grade was a 56-1. 2021, a bunch of those FSU guys, the starting DN is in the NFL. That offensive line graded out 56-3. At Ohio State, the lowest of the group, 55-4, and that's with two bookend NFL tackles. Clemson last year, a bunch of NFL dudes, 58-7. And believe it or not, when you tally up Knapp, Pendleton, Craig, Billy Shroud, and Wagner, 61.3 average for their PFF grade. So I found that astonishing when you look back at the offensive line comparing them into those games. So just a little kudos to the Coach Rudolph, Coach Denbrock, Riley Leonard, his, his moving. But also the offensive line did play its butt off for those 60 minutes. Okay, so to bring it back... Sure. To the Northern Illinois game. So it's they they went into AM with six starts. They added five that game. Now you're adding five again. So all right, Tim, I see what, I see what you did there. You just key keep number working, like, keep key number two. I need to remind you that this is a family friendly YouTube channel. So what do you mean by 18 plus here, Tim? Because uh this is a game at Notre Dame Stadium. I don't this is one of my favorite metrics. This is an old Nick Saban one. Nick Saban, uh, when he charts explosive pass plays, he is all about 18 and plus in the air, the ball in the air. And Notre Dame only did this one time against yeah. AM. Obviously, a young offensive line. You know, who were the wide receivers? The explosiveness, Riley Leonard, the game plan was to get rid of it in a, you know, quick out of the hand, scramble, all those types of things. So, you got you got to attack, and I think we know that moving forward. I think the game plan in game one was to survive, advance, stay. Yeah, I talked about in our live show the other day was don't give the AM crowd a three run home run, meaning a sack. Mike Denbrock talked about that in his press conference, where we did not want that crowd to go, 
you know, give them fresh meat, so to speak, which was a sack. So they limited the yards in the air. They only threw a couple passes past 15. And obviously the 118 was to Bo Collins. So when you go into Northern Illinois, obviously it keep expanding the offense. That's going back to the offensive line. You got a game under your belt, another game coming up and see how many explosives we can get. The key point though, is this don't go crazy. Marcus Freeman, it's year three, not game two in his first season against Marshall, where during that week, he talked about, we we got to attack, we got to throw bombs away, we got to get attack Marshall vertically. 0 for 8, 0 for 8 with Tyler Buckner and that wide receiver group on passes 18 and plus in that game. So I think Leonard and this wide receiver group is a better core, so I would um, you know expect them to attack vertically and uh, and push the ball open things up for the run game and that young offensive line to keep growing together. All right. Another number here for your third key, Tim, is 3.6. Yeah, I'm all into the numbers when you start diving into into the things. And this is crazy. The 3.6, Mike, and all the Notre Dame fans out there, yards per play from Texas A&M. Who Mm -hmm. would have thought an SEC team with some future NFL guys, their left tackle is going to be in the NFL, their left guard is going to be in the NFL, the quarterback's got a lot of hype. He had a bad game because I think that's more to do with the defense. Sure. Um, some really good football players on that team. 3.6 yards per play. To put this in the context, the horrible Boston College team we saw a couple of years ago in the snow was three yards. So <laughs> wow. that's that that tells you how dominant that this uh you know Al Golden defense was. And then the obviously the three six got me thinking. Going back, going back to the USC game, the worst offense, or excuse me, yeah, the worst offense or the first, the worst defensive performance against an offense under Al Golden is obviously Caleb Williams. They averaged 7.1 a play in that game where they beat him up in the Coliseum. Since then, Mike, 15 straight games, a team has not gotten six yards a play. Marcus Freeman gave up six yards of play four in four games in 21 as the D.C. 2022, Al Golden and Notre Dame did it four times. Hasn't been done since. Huh. 15 straight, including 10 out of those 15, I found amazing, 4.9 and fewer. So that's just telling you how elite this football team it has been playing going back to the South Carolina Bowl game, and they only gave up 5.0. So it's really it was like four nine nine. You rounded sure. up, it was five. So uh, this defense is has been clicking. They got a scheme. I go back to Al Golden's spring last year, where he talked about how much they got rid of after their first year. They realized we don't need all this stuff. So they're re- refining, and I look at it like he's literally turning into a mad scientist. So let that dude watch film. Let him hang out in his little uh, football laboratory. Let everyone else go recruit. You coach the heck out of the D, scheme it up, and just keep this thing marching because this could be a lights-out defense like we haven't seen in a long time at Notre Dame. All right, let's take a look at the numbers here. Um, Notre Dame is a 28-point favorite right now. It's you know Four touchdowns is a good bit. The over-under is 44-and-a-half. So that is a big spread. Uh, and uh, a fairly low total. I mean, that's, I mean, 46 and a half was the Notre Dame AM game. So this is 44 and a half, and Notre Dame's yeah. 28 point favorite. Odd Shark Tim has Notre Dame 39, NIU 28. So they have Notre Dame winning, Northern Illinois covering the spread, and the total blowing past the over. So that's uh, our unofficial sponsor. Odd Shark, which we've been using for years in this video, definitely not a sponsor, but I, we, we always find their little algorithm score interesting. I think they had Notre Dame beating AM by 30 points last week, and now they got yes. Notre Dame just getting by uh, NIU, according to their computer. So, what does Tim Hyde say more importantly? Well, you look at NIU, they got 18 starters back, nine mm-hmm. on offense, nine on defense. You know, they had a losing record two years ago with a uh, you know, winning record last year, a ton of guys coming back and they like to play smash ball and their head coach is even proud of it. We're going to milk the clock. That's who we are. We're going to run the ball, some play action, things of that nature. They don't have a dynamic quarterback whatsoever, but it's like, are they going to be a, 
a navy -ish, meaning we're just going to kill a ton of clock. We're going to milk it, snap it with two seconds left every time. Who cares what we do? Just we're not going to give Notre Dame the ball. So it's it's the home opener. Obviously, they've had some dips against teams in the past. Ball State in 18. Obviously, the famous Marshall game, the Toledo game where Michael Mayer and Jack Cohn with the dislocated finger gets it popped back in. Next play, throws the touchdown to Mayer to win it. So they've had these hiccup games in game two. But I think this one, the home opener, year three, the intensity of coming off of that game, sure, there's going to be a dip. But I think at the end of the day, these guys are going to be fired up come out there, have a lot of energy. I think Marcus Freeman set the tone going back to that that tunnel. I think those kids feed off of that. And I wouldn't be surprised if these players are like, we got to rally for our coach now, and we got to bring the energy and hype him up. So I, that's what I'm expecting in this game. Going back to Northern Illinois, killing the clock, milking it, and things of that nature. Notre Dame doesn't get the ball a lot. I, I see a, maybe a lot of field goals and whatnot. But at the end of the day, man, I'm going to go – I'm going to go an odd score since I'm doing a lot of weird numbers. I'll go 36. I'll go 36 to 13 Notre Dame. All right. I think Notre Dame 45, Northern Illinois 13. That's what I put in my blue and gold magazine. That was my score prediction that we had to send in last week before the A&M game. So we have to do for our magazine. It's just how we have to do these things. Love the print deadline. I think Notre Dame – is going to be absolutely juiced for this game because, listen, Notre Dame, these players have to know what is ahead of them and that the schedule is is pretty easy, that they have a real shot to go undefeated this regular season. I think they're going to be amped for that. It's not like we're coming off of an Iowa State loss. Oh, woe is me. They're, they're coming off of a huge win, and I, I think these guys are going to be jacked up, and I think they're going to win pretty comfortably 45 to 13. That's going to do it for this video, folks. Make sure you hit that thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. Head over to blueandgold.com for more predictions from the Blue and Gold staff as well as national picks and much more. Appreciate you all for watching, and as always, we will catch you next time.